Hello, everyone, and welcome to worship at Pilgrim Church. We are very glad indeed that all of you are here with us today. And uh, I'm going to be posting in the chat box the links that you might need for today, just to make sure everyone has access to the bulletin and other things that you might want to sign up for. We invite you to fill in a guest card if you are joining us uh, for the first or second time and think that we might not have your information. I also suggest that you click on that link for the bulletin PDF if you'd like to follow along in the order of worship. And your best view of worship today is probably going to be your speaker view up in the right hand of Zoom. You can click on view and select speaker view. So our worship service is recorded and we do post it on our website. So I want to let you know that that is the case. And our worship service now begins with Dot playing our organ prelude. Thank you so much, Dot, for that beautiful prelude. Welcome to Pilgrim Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, physically located in Lexington, Massachusetts, but welcoming people from all over today to our worship service. If you have a prayer, a joy, or a concern, I hope you will include that in the chat box so that we can add it to our prayers in this worship service. I have a couple of special announcements for today. Next Sunday is our Blessing of the Animals 
And that means if your puppy wants to come to worship, your puppy can come to worship with you. And if you want to send us a picture, please send us a picture in advance. Admin at pilgrimcongregational.org. It can be your puppy, your kitten, it can be your fish, it can be your snake, it can be your stuffed animal. It can be a picture of a beloved animal that you are missing right now. Um, and we want to include them in our blessing of the animals next Sunday in worship. Next Sunday is also World Communion Sunday. And uh, I am looking for a Spanish speaker to help me out with part of the communion liturgy. So if anyone would be willing, I would appreciate that very, very much. Now, um, today, after worship is over, our church council invites you to stay on after a brief time of coffee hour. We are going to just have some general feedback, a time for questions or comments. We're more than six months in to worshiping together online and to shifting much of what we do as a congregation online. And we want to spend some time reflecting on that and hearing your feedback and your questions. So we will uh, close out coffee after uh, 10 minutes or so and then open it up for discussion and feedback. We hope that you'll stay for a few minutes for that. Uh, also, October 11th, two very exciting things happening. The crop walk is happening. And I put uh, some information in eNotes as well as in that welcome video. But if you want to contribute or if you want to walk on that day at a good, safe distance and be part of the crop walk, hope that you will be in touch to do that. Don and Claire Moyer would love to talk to you about that. And on October 11th, we also have a fantastic guest preacher, Whitney Ritalik, who is the executive director of Out Metro West, which is a group that, among other things, supports our LGBT, LGBTQ plus teens. And we are so excited to hear about that holy work that Out Metro West is doing as we hear from Whitney Ritalik on October 11th. Now, Without further ado, we will continue with our worship service, and Doug Johnston is our liturgist today who will lead us on. Good morning. Please share with me our call to worship and our opening prayer. Let us give thanks to God who is good. God's steadfast love lasts forever. Give thanks to God at all times. God's mercy is everlasting. This is the day you have made, O oh God. This is the day you have called us to prayer. This is the day you have called us to bless. This is the day you have called us to do justice, love kindness, and walk alongside you. This is the day you have promised to be present. This is the day, this day and every day. Amen. Thank you, Doug. And our opening hymn is going to be a, an organ version of This is the Day Today. It is in your bulletin and I'm gonna share that on the screen and you know, Many of us know this hymn. If you want to sing it along at home, that's wonderful. If you don't and you want to dance, you're going to see me doing a little dance to This is the Day. Um, let us sing together.
Our first scripture reading today is from Micah, chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. What shall I bring when I come before God and bow down before God on high, you ask? Am I to come before God with burnt offerings, with year-old calves? Will God be placated by thousands of rams or 10,000 rivers of oil? Should I offer my firstborn for my wrongdoings? the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. Listen here, mortal. God has already made abundantly clear what good is and what God needs from you. Simply do justice, love kindness, and humbly walk with your God. And from Matthew chapter 5, verses 6 through 12. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted, persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Hi, everybody. Um, before I start my children's message, I just wanted to mention and remind families of elementary school age kids that we will be meeting today on the playground for a social distance um, get together for our families. Um, so if anyone else has um, kids of elementary school age and want to join us, feel free. Um, and now I will start our children's message. So today in Sunday school before church, we were talking about the part of the Beatitudes where it says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And we talked about what it meant to be really, really hungry or thirsty for something. Think of that feeling. Have you ever felt that way about something other than food? Sometimes I think of hunger as an ache, something that keeps getting stronger and stronger. I can't ignore or forget that I'm hungry. It may become the only thing I think about. Many people of the, many of the people that Jesus spent time with were very hungry. They may not have had enough food or water, but their stomachs were not the only parts of their bodies that were hungry. Their hearts were hungry for righteousness. That's a big word meaning justice. And this was how Jesus wanted the world to be, a place where people lived good lives, not only for their own sake, but for everyone else's sake too. Jesus teaches the people how God's justice means we can make sure everyone has what they need. There are right and healthy relationships between people and all living things. There are a lot of ways things were not right for the people listening to Jesus. In that time, some people had a lot of money and power. They used what they had to dominate other people. Some people were poor and felt powerless. Jesus spoke here to the people who felt that ache for a better world, God's kind of world. Jesus knew their hearts were hungering more and more for relationships and systems to be fair and right. And just like we need food in order to live, we need love, hope, and healthy connections with others. Jesus understands and cares about all these needs. 
And part of feeling hungry for something is working for it, doing what we can to make what we hunger for come true. Sometimes this takes a lot of patience, focus, and hard work. It doesn't come easily or fast. Are there some things you're hungry for, like the people in Jesus's time? Think about it. What if we pretend that the thing you are so hungry for is on the other side of the room? To reach it, we have to push a really, really heavy stone out of the way. So let's try it. Put your hands out and try to push it out of the way. Wow, look at how strong your arms are. I want us to imagine that we are feeling our hunger for the right thing. And, sorry. <laughs> so let's think of each day like this. When we are feeling hungry for the world to be better and healthier than it is, we can stretch our arms and be as, as a powerful reminder that we are part of bringing God's kingdom to earth. And with every faithful push we make, we get a little closer. So before we go on to the next thing, um, remember last week when, we, when I set up blessing and you had your arm your hands open and then you put it on your heart let's do that again let's put our arms out and i will say a blessing and if you want to receive it you can take it and place it on your heart god blesses you to live for justice in your home and your community amen and now it's time for our anthem Good morning, everybody. Today's anthem will be uh, Thy Perfect Love, composed by John Rutter in 1975. Uh, John Rutter is a living English composer um, with a significant body of work that we are just learning to, uh, just going through this year for the first time. We have a lot of pieces by him in our library, so we're hoping to sing more, but this is our first shot at it, and we uh, we hope you enjoy the anthem today. Thank you. 
Thanks so much, Max and the choir. And now I invite you to pray with me. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be always acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, Sarah invited us to think about hunger and the hunger for righteousness. I also want us to think about being hungry for a moment. Have you ever been hungry? I mean, so hungry that you could feel it in your stomach, so hungry that it distracted you, so hungry that it made you dizzy. The kids in this one school were hungry, their teachers discovered. Not most of them, but any kid who is hungry will break a teacher's heart. And there were a bunch in this school. It's a common story. You've heard it before. The kids were hungry, but what could be done? Free lunches were offered by the school system. The teachers brought in granola bars and oranges and watched the kids go home on Friday knowing that they would come in even hungrier on Monday. The kids were not all right. They were hungry which made the teachers hungry, not for food, but hungering and thirsting for righteousness, so hungry that they could feel it in their stomachs, so hungry that it made them dizzy. I think when you are hungering and thirsting for righteousness, you are hungering to align yourself with God's will. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So some of those teachers talked to some of the parents, and they uh, got hungry for righteousness too. And some of the churches heard about it, and oh my goodness, hunger and thirst for righteousness spread until there was a plan no child at that school would be hungry during the school day. No child that school or their family either would be hungry on the weekend. Every child would eat all through the summer too. And suddenly one of the teachers was pushing back all the tables in her room on Friday afternoons for a pop-up food pantry. And then they were raising money for the school secretary to have cheese sticks at her desk. And then the churches in town were working together with the food pantry to make sure every child at that school had enough to eat. Now, you know, church people, we have food on the brain. Not only is feeding people sacred and central to us, we've got that story of 5,000 people being fed that allows us to imagine a world where no one is hungry. So then it came to be that the next school over was ready for the healthy snack program and then the whole town, and you see where this is going. That was 2014. My son happened to be a first grader when all of this was starting up at his school. So we got to watch all of this unfold in our school community, in our town, and it was beautiful. And in fact, Arlington Eats is still going strong, having partnered up with the local food pantry in the midst of this pandemic of virus and this pandemic of hunger, they are feeding people. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled when those who hunger and thirst for righteousness are filled, the hungry are filled too. It doesn't have to be physical hunger, of course, that makes us hunger for righteousness. Walter Brueggemann, a great UCC Bible scholar, talks about what underlies the Micah passage that we all know by heart, to do justice, Mispot is to be sure that the neighbor is provided for. And he goes on to say that those 
two terms in Hebrew, mispat and hesed, stand at the center of Israel's faith talk. Indeed, mispat most often comes in a pair with tzedakah, righteousness, and hesed comes most often with amuna, faithfulness. So we are given Israel's two most important word pairs, justice and righteousness, steadfast love and faithfulness that echo with the love of neighbor and the love of God. For Micah, justice is about caring for the poor and those who are vulnerable and walking humbly with God is walking God's path and God's way. Brueggemann likes the phrase other-centered solidarity. Other-centered solidarity as a companion to walking humbly with God. And I think of Micah's exhortation this way. If I want to find myself in God's presence, then I will love and serve my neighbor. I will go beyond charity into God's vision of justice. That is to say, the kingdom of God. Jesus would have known this prophet and the other instructions of the Hebrew Bible, which balance and indeed combine love of neighbor with love of God. It doesn't have to be physical hunger, but right now, there's a lot of physical hunger in our world. You have read the same headlines that I have. Food pantries are seeing up to double the number of clients. One in 10 households with children are food insecure in the US. And we haven't even seen yet the worsening impacts of this crisis. Yet there is and there will be enough food to go around plenty. We may be in crisis, but we are still blessed with abundance. It doesn't have to be physical hunger, but I do know that a lot of pilgrims who hunger to see their neighbors fed, folks who work at the Interfaith Garden, folks who support the food pantry, help Lexrap deliver for Foodlink, walk in the crop walk, even in a year when you can't do that as a big group. All of that pilgrims are part of. The confirmation class is going to be making meals for 50 people in a couple of weeks. And I know other pilgrims are meeting human needs, hungering and thirsting for a world where everyone has enough. Now, you might think, I haven't done that. But if you're here and you support this church, you have indeed. If you give to the special offering next week, Neighbors in Need, you have indeed. If you're part of this congregation, your mission committee is working on your behalf to support many different groups that meet human needs. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for in their hunger, in their vision for a world without hunger, others will be filled. Just want to say one more thing about this beatitude. The first few beatitudes are passive. Jesus saying, when you experience difficulty, here is a word of hope. But this one and the next few are active. If the poor in spirit are encouraged, the mourners comforted, the meek strengthened, perhaps Jesus could see them being kingdom builders, people of vision, courage, and strength, people who can do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with their God. Amen. And now it is time for passing of the peace. So at the beginning of 
this season we're in. We started with um, doing the Cambodian traditional greeting, Jomri Ap Sor. So we put our hands together like this and we bow and say Jomri Ap Sor. Peace be with you, everybody. Friends, the time in our service for our prayers is here. And I, I'm going to keep a, a half an eye on the chat to see if there are other prayers that come in today. One of my great Thanksgivings in the end of September and the end of October is for the extraordinary fall colors. And I know that you join me in giving thanks that today we can look out the window and suddenly the trees are red. How did that happen? It happens every year and it is a blessing every year. I also want to uh, lift up exciting news from the Southern New England Conference of the United Church of Christ. We give thanks for the calling of Darrell Goodman, Goodwin, who will be our new executive conference minister. And you might be thinking, that's the wider UCC. I have no idea what that is about. Reverend Darrell Goodwin will be uh, leading the staff of the conference who in turn support and bless the congregations and clergy of the conference. And uh, I am absolutely thrilled. I hope that you will read all about him in e-notes, and I give thanks to God for the arrival of Darrell Goodwin in January here. Now, I am also aware of a number of concerns within the life of our community, and I want to lift up today the memory of David Cohen, who was a mentor and colleague of Susan M's, who passed away this week. He will be missed. He will be missed and his work will continue to bless his field. I also wanna lift up for prayers of healing. Reverend Mike, a friend of John's and mine and Zach's, Reverend Mike, who had heart surgery this week, we pray for him and his spouse, Reverend Christine, as he recovers from that surgery. And I also want to take a moment to lift up one of the deep concerns of our country right now. In this moment, after hearing what did or did not happen after Breonna Taylor's death and the subsequent lack of an indictment for those responsible. The officers of the United Church of Christ put out a word, and I'm going to offer it as part of our prayer today. I'm reading just part of it. You can read the rest on ucc.org. We, the elected officers of the UCC, affirm our support for the leaders and clergy of the Louisville churches and the Indiana Kentucky Conference as they call for justice for Breonna Taylor. Our hearts are broken as we acknowledge the grief and immeasurable pain of all who knew and loved Breonna Taylor. Her light was extinguished too quickly and with violence. We pray for all who continue to, to love and celebrate her life we too will continue to hold her memory and say her name, Brianna Taylor. We are a people who continue to wait for justice that never seems to come, and yet we wait in hope, believing that justice will indeed prevail. Justice and equality linger, sometimes at a distance, compelling us to hold valuable every life. As we wait, we pray knowing that as people of faith, we believe that God hears and answers prayers. And it is a matter of faith for us as disciples of the risen Christ that we join with the oppressed, whom the law does not fairly and fully represent, and ally with them in their cries for justice. 
Friends, let us pray. O oh God, on this day, as the seasons change, we bring to you all our prayers. Our prayers as we thirst and hunger for righteousness and justice. Our prayers as we mourn. Our prayers as we hope and pray for the healing of all those who are in need. Our prayers for those who are teaching and learning, healing and treating. Our prayers for those who find themselves in the midst of the six month slump trying to find energy and hope in the midst of pandemic. And we pray, especially this day, for those who are literally hungry. Help us to do what we can to feed the hungry, to meet the needs, to bless those who are vulnerable. And we pray this, O oh God, in the name of your Son, and with the words that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are part of something larger because we are part of this church. We are part of something that means that when we hunger and thirst for righteousness, we do not do so alone. We do so in the company of Christians in this community and around the world who will feed people and who will stand for justice and live into kindness and blessing. To support the work of this church, there are many things that you can do. You can send in your pledge by check. You can also give on our website and we invite you now during this offertory to think of the ways that you are able to support the ministries of this church.
Friends, let us pray. O oh God, we dedicate our lives and all that we have to the work of life, of love, of peace. Receive our gifts and lead us in wisdom and courage. Amen. Now, our closing hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory, is an extraordinary piece on the organ, and the words are fantastic. I'm going to share the words with you so you can sing along at home. We'll be singing verses 1, 3, and 4, and Dot will be playing for us. You feel that the God of grace and God of glory has granted you wisdom and courage for the facing of this hour. May you feel wisdom, courage, peace and love for the facing of this and every hour. Amen. And now our postlude.
Thank you so much, Dot, for that postlude. And uh, this ends our worship service. So I'm going to hit stop on the recording, and then I'm going to invite.